Hi, so um, before the previous video, I was talking about why are they gay people. And the main point behind why I think there are gay people is, is due to reincarnation, reincarnation basically. And the fact that we have a whole gamut, a whole bunch of female souls coming through, being born into male bodies. And what's going on there? Why would that be happening? I'm going to look at that today. So before I talked about the early decades of our 20th century, when I was, uh, I referenced Asia and I referenced uh, the infanticide, uh, killing of babies, of especially females, because um, especially if your, if a family's resources were limited and they only really wanted a male to sort of carry forth the family line, etc., then if they had a female, you know, maybe they might make things happen so that they could uh, fall pregnant again and hopefully get an, a male the next time. But never mind the female, maybe, maybe she would be done away with. And like th this happened quite a lot. But this would explain the earlier half of the century. But it doesn't explain what's happening now. It doesn't explain any whole bunches of souls and people born as male, but with such female leanings, female souls, female... I'm just going to say female hearts. It doesn't explain that. It doesn't explain this later half of the century and into this 21st century, like anybody from 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, Generation X, Generation Y, and the Millennials. There are so many Millennials here today who feel misplaced. The whole LGBTQT community. There is a lot of chaos and there's a lot of upheaval. There's a lot of raging against our societal machine. Let's look at this. Okay, let's look at the earth as, as a whole at the moment, the earth as a whole. Is it healthy? Have we solved all our major problems? Is the, the power of decision, the power of making important choices, looking at the majority of the planet, who holds this the most? Who holds the power of choice mostly in their hands? Is it the female side or is it still largely male? The power dynamics where decisions really get made. Well, even though in the Western world we've been raging and fighting hard to have equal rights, you must admit though, a lot of the rest of the world not all of it, a lot of the rest of the world is still under patriarchal lines. It's still under the patriarchy, so to speak. If you look in Asia, if you look in the Arab states, if you look in India, humans wise, our power dynamics still lie largely with the male. I'm going to... 
I'm going to elaborate more on the male form. Okay. The male form. Okay, now I am a, I think I would consider myself to be a Western educated female who's had a lot of and enough time for reading and thinking my own thoughts in my life. I consider myself very fortunate in this regard. But looking at things the way they are, looking at things just as they are out there. The male form, the male human form, commands a lot more instant and instantaneous respect, command and attention. The female form commands a lot of just general attention because people like looking at females and, you know, just them, the way they are in the room, their shapes, their forms. But in terms of power dynamics, in terms of just who are you going to pay more attention to? The man's voice in a room or the woman's voice in a room. I'm going to say that generally throughout human population, a tall male with a baritone or let's just say deep male voice commands so much more instantaneous attention and respect than the average, fem uh, average female voice coming out of an average female body. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm a teacher. I teach at a boarding school and I have male colleagues and co-workers. And I have noticed the male voice, the male voice carries with it so much more authority than the human female voice. This little human female voice of mine can only do so much in terms of classroom management. And if you're a teacher, you will understand exactly what I mean. It's basically the controlling of small crowds, a small crowd being the body of students in your classroom. Me yelling out to a body of students in my classroom only does so much. However, if I had one male colleague come into the room and start telling them in a not shouting, but in a semi-loud tone of voice, everybody would pay attention. They would be facing the front and they would be listening out for what to do. It's just what happens. It's just what happens. So if this is me experiencing this and also other females out there, like I imagine women out there don't want to have to acknowledge this because it doesn't help us. I mean, we're trying so hard to get things evened up but in this respect, in terms of crowd control and dealing with masses of people, the male, there's a reason why we have a bunch of suits at the helm. There's a reason why people will just look at the tall male and listen to him more, even if the female has very good ideas, well worth listening to. The ears will listen to the male more. It's hard to admit that, but it's just true. It's just true. I always tell my male colleagues, I am not a little bit jealous of your male voice. Male voice with it commands such attention and authority. It has uh, an element of authority about it. Maybe it's got something to do with a sort of a caveman archaic, like the power behind this voice could beat you up if you don't listen to it. But however, a female doesn't carry that fear with her, really. Not really, because if you listen to a female, there's no chance she's going to beat you up if you, if you don't listen to her. There's no, there's no uh, fear of reprisal with, with a female. With a female, you like listening to her because, you know, you like listening to her. Anyway, so that fear of reprisal, that fear of so that, that fear of reprisal thing, I mean, we, we don't really think about it, but 
think about, like, why, why is it that if a man walks into a room and starts talking, you'll pay much more immediate, respectful attention to him than if it was a woman? Like, really look at that. Like, think about it. Like, why? And if you get down to it, it's, well, the male could probably do something damaging to you if you don't listen to him. However, the female, she's less of a threat, right? So it's sort of like down to survival dynamics, basically. My cat is wanting to get some of the attention here. Yeah, well. And I, I think that that's where it comes from. And okay, so if I'm a teacher and I'm experiencing this, if I'm a teacher and I'm experiencing this in the classroom, in terms of people dynamics, managing people, and if we look at politics and uh, on the world stage, generally in different cultures, in, in, maybe in Western culture, a woman would be in Western or a few cultures women would be listened to seriously. But in, you must admit, in this day and age, if you look at the whole planet, not just a few countries, the whole planet, all the countries, they're largely going to listen more to a male at this stage of the game. So if you look at this, it is well known that the Earth as a whole, not just specific countries, the Earth as a whole, is still largely patriarchal, right? Mm-hmm. It would be great if it was more matriarchal. It really would, because that would mean it wouldn't just be... Decisions wouldn't be made on a solely tunnel vision standpoint. And it, they would. I think there would be more of a, a general view of what would be good for the people, the families, the mothers and the children. Because if you look at it, the choices that are being made these days about wars and fighting and military action, choices are still being made without, without any say-so from the majority of the public. And any female voices, female the voices from the domestic side of things are absolutely disregarded, aren't they? Yes, they are. So if you consider that A lot of the power movers and shakers at this present time from humans, a lot of the power moves are coming from males, male bodies, right? Okay. And the progression towards a more balanced way of doing things, like the more female way of doing things, the may, the may, maybe more the way females would look at a problem or deal with a problem in a more holistic sense rather than attack at certain junctures and not look at the whole macro scale picture. This progression from patriarchal view towards a more balanced view or even matriarchal, it's happening so slowly. It's happening really slowly. And in many parts of the world, is it happening at all? <laughs> but maybe our planet at this stage of the game or at this stage of time doesn't have that much time. Maybe our planet, our world is badly in need of some balance that has been very slow in forthcoming, very slow and very incremental in happening. So how could this be amended? Well, if you think that this is happening so slowly, and at least for maybe the next generation at least, we're still going to have the seat of power with largely males and largely male bodies issuing instructions and making decisions. What can be done about this if there's such a slow progression and not enough is being done 
to share the power over male and female energy. Not enough is being done, not enough, there's not enough change happening. And the world is on a clock. You must admit, we are aware of a few problems that the world is experiencing. And the decisions being made do not always, aren't almost always not for the good of our whole planet. Not for the good of the whole planet, not for the good of the majority of the people on it. Okay, so how could this be amended again? Well, maybe this could be amended if, well, you know that there's still going to be the majority of the choices and the power is still going to be coming from male bodies. But maybe what could be done is you start something. There's a stipulation set in place or a recruitment call to have certain kinds of souls inhabit some of the male bodies. Come in, inhabit them pilot the ships for a while. This might explain why we have so many female personalities in male bodies. However, at this juncture, they feel a little lost because they don't know what their purpose is. They don't know what their, their reason for living is. And they feel really lost. They don't. I mean, if you, if you follow the usual roles and um, what do you call it? Tropes. The roles and tropes of of what males and females usually follow or have followed up until now, the average gay person feels extremely out of place and really, really isolated. Unless you know they're in an uh, in, in an uh, well amongst each other. If they're just in regular society, they feel extremely out of place and extremely isolated. But maybe the reason that they're here is extremely necessary. They're a force to supplement the balance, the balance of male and female. If you have a whole section of personalities and souls that are largely feminine on the feminine side have lived more lifetimes as females and feel comfortable in that way if you have a whole legion of them and i would say it is legion it is looking like that a whole legion of them coming into male bodies what purpose could that serve what's the reason for this this looks to be like the number one really only reason to me why this would be happening. They're a legion of aid. If you are one of these people, you are a legion of aid. You're extremely necessary. Maybe you feel lost and maybe you feel like you don't fit anywhere, but there are so many of you you can create your own lives and your own narratives and what happens with you. Absolutely. You are not, you are not stuck. You have a great say in what happens and what can happen in your capacity as male in your arena in your particular situation, inhabiting the male body, the male body with all that it comes with, the height, maybe the strength, the tone of voice. Maybe it's all absolutely necessary. It's probably nothing you've ever done before, a life a kind of life you've never lived before and that's why it feels so alien and so strange and so weird and you're not sure how to navigate right
but you're a balancing force. You are where you are for a very good reason. Because of the body you inhabit, the voice you have, the attention and authority that you can command, and you have this female soul in there. Imagine the influence. Imagine what you could do with it. You have a lot more immediate power than the average female in a female body. You're an advocate. A very strong one. Maybe this is going to be an unselfish mission. If you consider, if, if you were female and if you were in a, a female body in past lives, you, you got used to living certain roles, you, forgot, you got used to certain narratives, you got used to... Please don't do that. You got used to certain narratives and you got used to maybe the prospect of getting married, having a family, having children. Okay, here's the thing, being born in the body that you have now, this is not going to happen easily, unless you went through immense amounts of, immense amounts of bodily changes, surgery, um, probably immense amounts of trauma to your body. Uh, I don't mean trauma mentally. I mean like trauma, like physical trauma to your body, inflicting ph massive physical trauma to your body, trying to change your body to something that you had before in other lifetimes and you wish that you had now, but you have a totally different set of tools. You have a totally different complement an inventory of tools and skills and a suit that you've been given and you just don't know how to use it yet. You just don't know what to do with it. Maybe what is happening is you are required to use what you have as it is. This is probably very unwelcome news or information or you can decide whether I'm talking out my hat. Maybe you're meant to use your bodysuit, your abilities and your skill sets exactly as they are. And your femaleness inside of that is necessary, very necessary. You can carry a certain weight that would be difficult for the female in the female body, if you know what I'm saying. A female in a male body can carry a certain weight better than a female in a female body. It's unfamiliar, it's extremely strange, and it's nothing you've ever done before. But in the idea, well, considering in the scope of reincarnation, if this is not the only life that you're going to be living, then why not just give this one a go as it is? Use your avatar. Use your avatar with your soul inside, your soul is very necessary where it is. 
use it the best way you can with the talents and the knowledge and experience you have to help and to aid the whole world as a whole. I think what's probably been happening is the focus has been on individuals. Individuals have had individual focus on themselves and they're very upset that their lives can't be the way they want them because they live in a suit that does not allow for that. So maybe this lifetime, this particular lifetime you're living is not about that. Maybe this particular lifetime is not about what you can do for yourself this lifetime. It's what, what can you do to help the shift, the general shift, the general current of where things are going. Because our earth could go in one direction, but there's also another direction it could take. And maybe part of that depends on your help, your assistance, your push. Okay, so you can't get married to a male male. Okay, so you can't have a baby. But maybe there are other things that are very necessary to be done from your vantage point, from what you can do. Doing what you can, where you are, with what you have. Maybe we don't have a stage play written yet for what you need to do. But maybe if you ask or follow your instincts, you can find it. Maybe you're already aware of certain things that could be done or need to be done. And maybe only someone like you could do it. Maybe that's what we're needing. We need you just the way you are, with no changes. And maybe, I think reincarnation is, is what happens. It, it, I mean, the, the whole world, everything works, nature, all of nature works on, on a system of recycling, energy, recycling and everything. Why not souls? Why not the etheric realm, realm too, you know? So maybe you're upset this time around that you cannot get the picture book life that you're expecting or that you would like for your particular soul, for your particular female leaning. But maybe that can happen again in the future. But right now, there's a lot that you can do that has nothing to do with that. But what you can do right now, you're in a position to be able to do things that a lot of other people cannot. You're in a special position to be able to do things that many, many others cannot. You are very necessary. There is no mistake that you're here.